Howdy and welcome to the FIFA Premier League preview uh, with me, Samuel Turner and Daniel Frost. It's amazing what can happen in a week in the Premier League. Arsenal show that they can be competitive against the biggest clubs in England. Liverpool prove that they might be able to survive in Europe and Manchester United have finally won a game. This week though we turn to the rear end of the table as we try to predict what will happen when Everton and Crystal Palace meet at Goodison Park. They only have one win between them all season, so let's see how Dan thinks the Toffees will line up. Now, my my top my starting lineup may be affected by their European game because at the time of recording that hasn't yet been played. But the team I'm going for is the same team that faced West Brom, and that's uh, Tim Howard in goal, a defence of Leighton Baines, Phil Jagielka, John Stones, and Seamus Coleman. Uh, in midfield, I've got the two central midfielders of Gareth Barry and James McCarthy. In front of them, I have the trio of Kevin Morales, Aidan McGeady and Stephen Naismith behind the big signing, 28 million, Romelu Lukaku. And the Crystal Palace side going to take on uh, Everton will be Julian Speroni in goal. Uh, we have got uh, Damien Delaney, um, Scott Dan, uh, Mariapa Ward. Uh, making up the defence um, in midfield. We've got James MacArthur, Yedenik the captain, Punchin, and uh, Wilfred Zaha returning, of course, to the club after a spell at Cardiff and Man United. And then Fraser Campbell, who's going to be sitting right b behind uh, Dwight Gale. Oh me, Edson, it's a FIFA Premier League preview. Hello, uh, I'm Sam. Dan is joining me. Apologies for the week break. Uh, we kind of took the international break a little bit seriously. And well, no, we didn't, that's a lie. We had technical issues. Um, but can I just say for the record that our match, Arsenal versus Man City, was a one all draw. So Absolutely. we're getting better at this. Definitely. Very, um, very slightly. Very, very slightly. At least we're getting some predictions right, if not completely right. So welcome to Goodison Park. Uh, Everton are taking on the might of Crystal Palace, who, uh, under the stewardship of Tony Pulis, uh, managed to stay up in the league last season. Uh, obviously, Neil Warnock is a manager now. Um, languishing at the bottom of the table, though. Uh, well, near yeah. the bottom, anyway. They're 17th um, alongside uh, Burnley. Uh, West Brom and Newcastle all on two points. Not been the best of starts for the old uh, for the Crystals. It, re it really has the Crystals. I think you're I think you're looking for the Eagles. Well, I like Crystals. Crystals are better. What would you, Dan? What would you prefer as a present, an eagle or a crystal? <laughs> Probably say an eagle. Really? Where would you keep it? Hang on a tickle. Oh, he's oh. offside. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> what do you think of their start so far? It's not been the best. It's not, but I think that you have to kind of look at it in the, with the fact of the upheaval that can come from having this. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago um, when Villa lost their manager the day before, just like with um, Tony Pulis, and it, it did affect their start of the season as well. And such upheaval right at the last minute. I mean, you've got a lot of players there who've signed for Tony Pulis. Yeah. And uh, I think I think it was um, of play. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. from Liverpool, Martin Kelly signed, and then two days later, Tony Pulis was gone. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, where, where did what does he think now? It's going to be. Um, it was always going to be a struggle, I think, for the Crystals, and um, it's, but it's also been a struggle for Everton this year as well. They're, they're yeah, not I, I think in your intro you mentioned this was a battle at the bottom of the league. And no, battle. Technically battle at the rear end of the league either as in I meant like the bottom 10 I was like going to say because although technically end. true I don't think Everton fans would thank you for <laughs> lumping them down with that after such such high uh, performances in recent times um, I mean they've not had a bad start to league hello how's your father Ooh. Um, but they've only won once uh, a they draw against 10. Leicester yeah draw against Leicester Arsenal uh, lost of course against Chelsea and uh, they won 2 0 against West Brom, which is probably showing them a little bit of what. And I think the um, the score against Chelsea was a little flattering towards uh, the Blues as well. Everton. Yeah, it was much more even than that scoreline. Yeah, yeah. Stated. Um, the fact that you know Everton came back three times and it was it was three all. 
and then Chelsea just managed to get a bit of a bit of a luck with the breakthrough. Um, after um, Everton's season last season, what 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 do you think? Well, how do you think they're going to get on? They're eleventh in the table at the moment, um, lumped around Man United, Hull City, Leicester City. Not really amongst the teams they'd want to be involved with at this at this stage. I think if I was an Everton fan, I'd be slightly concerned that although yes, they've they've brought in um, Gareth Barry and uh, Lukaku on permanent deals, it's it's still the same team that played last year, but a year older, and without someone like Ross Barkley who was there probably their star and Annette kind of oh what a say oh, oh my word it's gone in there Wilfred Sahar returning to Crystal Palace not again um, can't do this again obviously never played I know he never started for Man United I think wasn't wasn't the game against their last fixture it was uh, Wilfred Sahar's second start in the Premier League in, the, in this history of playing in it, something something incredible for a guy. Like when I saw Zaha playing in the Championship before Crystal Palace came up, I thought, you know, th- he's going to be, a, you know, a, an exciting talent. Uh, he, he's really going to. Uh, I thought Man United was a perfect club for him because um, he had speed, he had pace, and he was creative. And I thought at the time, someone like Fergie would be the person to kind of really help make that blossom. Um, but it's obviously not happened, has it? No, I think Ferguson would have been someone who would have been very good for him. And he's a similar situation. He signed for Alex Ferguson and then and then obviously Alex Ferguson then decided to leave. So I, from, from the understanding you hear in the, in, the, in the media, which obviously is not always to be believed, um, a lot of it comes down to his kind of attitude and that's what kind of... Really? Was, what, 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 what they said? I've not, I've not heard any of this. Just uh, his attitude in terms of training and not really being as professional as one might hope of a, of a league what is going on with my defence lovely the captain pops another one in there we go 2-0 against Everton already um, but don't worry Everton fans because having a quick look at the head to head between these two sides I mean after last season uh, last season Crystal Palace did win 3-2 at Goodison Park that was back in April it was a 0-0 draw um, when Crystal Palace hosted the Toffees uh, and before then, it was it was ten years, two thousand and four, the first, the the last time they met previously, and uh, both wins for Everton, a four nil and a three one. So, looking at that, I don't think Everton. Do you think they have much to worry about? This is a game that they should definitely win, really, isn't it? They they should do, yeah. Although I mean, they have struggled, and I think it's it's we're still waiting to see how much of an effect Europe will have on them. Yeah. Um, well, they're playing. Um, they're playing at the time of recording. Are they playing this evening? They are indeed. Yes. Against I think Wolfsburg. So Wolfsburg. I mean, Wolfsburg are on, a, are on a bad team. So they will definitely give them a challenge. And so it's a case of seeing because I don't think they have a particularly big squad in comparison to other t- clubs. No. So. Uh, and the last thing you want is is injuries. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know as a team how how you would go about the Europa League. Do you? Is it competitive? I think if you enter it at the stage that, say, Chelsea entered it a year ago, after being knocked out of the Champions League, that I think, you know, that's when you can take it quite competitively and think, you know, you've got a serious chance of winning it. But surely Martinez's approach is kind of we need to focus on the Premier League rather than Europa League. Do you not think? I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, the only the only difference that's probably come is in recent years the the addition that. Is the, it's the addition that the winner of the, UA, the Europa League goes into the Champions League, which is something that I think was definitely oh. needed. Yeah. Because there was so many people were not really trying in the Europa League because it didn't really offer anything. And it just made perfect sense for someone to win a European competition for that to have a proper reward. And everyone yeah. wants to get in the Champions League. So what better way of rewarding them than that? And all it really offered teams, especially Premier League teams, uh, in a league that is quite fiercely competitive and fast that it was just a distraction they didn't need especially when games are played on you know Thursdays and Wednesdays um, which is kind of when you're trying to prepare for the weekend I know Everton uh, this game is going to be happening on the Sunday still it's some I, I'm sure some managers would argue just like Brendan Rodgers did with the whole um, storage affair that there are certain players who need more time to rest um, 
And when you look at the, like the front pairing for Crystal Palace, very sort of speedy play, players like Zaha, are they going to get the rest they need? Well, Crystal Palace aren't in Europa League, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Oops. Um, where do you think? Do you think Everton are going to be able to replicate what they did last season? Do you think Martinez is going to have continued success, or do you think that? Um, Europa League is going to hamper that success. I, th I think they will do. I think they will do okay. I mean, I'm. I will. I will admit that I was very unsure until last season of Everton uh, of joint uh, Roberto Martinez. Sorry, it's half time. Um, it is I half was very time. unsure about Crystal Palace. Indeed, what is going on? Um, I was very unsure about Roberto Martinez. Looking at his record at Wigan, um, I all I saw was a team perpetually fighting relegation. Um, and I just thought, eventually, a good manager will make steps and kind of take you out, take you above that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very, very unsure that I would have been worried for Everton. That yes, they were very, you could play very attractive football, but they tended to be very poor defensively, um, and that yeah. was a problem that I thought they'd face. But I hold my hands up and say he has definitely um, proved me wrong, and I think. Um, I think Everton will do well whether or not they can match last season because they haven't strengthened in the same way that other teams have they've stayed they've, they've I think the, the term is they've run very fast to stay exactly in the same place yeah um, if you look at if you just for just briefly if you look at what Brendan Rodgers has done at Liverpool to try and help himself cope with the demands of playing in Europe bear in mind it's a Champions League um that, that was a sort of approach you need to do where it was Everton have kind of just held on to those players that they had on and loan. So we'll see how the um, season pans out for them as we get into the second half. 2-0 down to Crystal Palace, guys. Wow. Um, so let's have a quick look at just general the Premier League, um, how it's shaping up. Of course, Man United got their first win, um, which, was, which is exciting against QPR. Um, Di Maria was incredible. Did you see the match? Or the I, 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 I didn't see all of it, but I saw enough of it to know that you were right. Di Maria was incredible. Um, Hello. It was. Ooh. Oh, it, yeah. The, um, you get the feeling that once they all click into gear, and I don't think it'll be too long until they start to click into gear, then teams should start getting very wary of Man United because they have such power going forward yeah. it's the same with Everton last, uh, Liverpool last year yes they may concede but they're going to score a bag full you would think yeah um, obviously um, they've got a quite a powerful first 11 but maybe there's not enough on the bench to keep Man United going should there be injury so we'll watch that they've got Leicester City at the uh, King Power Stadium on Sunday also on Sunday night um, you may be wondering viewer why we're not playing Man City Chelsea um, that's all because uh, Chelsea's going to be next week because it's going to be Aston Villa versus Chelsea because we can't pass that match up without putting our two respected teams against each other. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be an incredible fixture. Um, I'm they, tempted they, to, as a Chelsea fan, well. um, I think Mourinho is going to park the bus as, uh, as he often does. I mean, they won their last season. Um, what do, you th what do you think is going to happen in that one? Um, well, I mean, Aston Villa have had a very good start to the season. A surprisingly good start to the season. Um, yeah, the... Um, how, yeah. However, the, the Chelsea fixture screams to me that that's where it will all come tumbling down. Um, For Chelsea? I mean, don't get me wrong. It, yeah. I mean, it may, they may, it may come tumbling down against Arsenal this week. Um, however... <laughs> Well, if you look at Man City's previous fixtures, a loss against Stoke, um, only just getting a draw against Arsenal. Um, it was kind of bad defending from Arsenal that let them in. Um, and good good goalkeeping from Chesney, which kind of probably prevented Man City from, from scoring sooner than they did. So they're not, you know, at the moment, they're not the imperious t side that they were last year. I think, no. I think they're definitely vulnerable. Um, oh my word Naismith sneaks get that, in a let's goal let's get that ball back let's get that <laughs> we've ball got back. game to play <laughs> um, looking at other fixtures um, finishing off the, the round of Sundays bumper Sunday Tottenham versus West Brom um, 
I can see Tottenham winning that. West Brom are having a bit of a torrid time. They, they, yeah, I, I, th- I think already the days of uh, Alan Irving's days are numbered. I think there's. there's Do you think? Yeah. I, th- I think so. Yeah, mainly because um, they've not started well, and not a lot of the fans were kind of up in arms when he was brought in. He wasn't a fan. Some of the fans wanted to see. Um, he's not got experience. You, you, it was always going to be a struggle that that was going to go well. And so now it's already started badly. You just... Yeah, I think I think West Brom will be uh, will be uh, a strong relegation contender uh, this year. Let's just take a quick look at the fixtures on Saturday. Uh, quite a few matches. Six matches happening on Saturday. QPR against Stoke City. Um, I can see Stoke coming out on top of their QPR again. Another t- it's another side which are really having problems. Bought really well in the transfer window, but uh, kind of having their own issues as well, trying to bed in that squad. Swansea City versus Southampton. The Swans will be looking to bounce back from a glorious defeat against Chelsea. Uh, Aston Villa versus Arsenal. Can you do it again, Dan? Can you beat... Um, well, one I of the, wouldn't uh, say no. It's going to always be tough. I mean, the things I would say in our favour are the fact that it is straight after Champions League um, and a disappointing night for them in, as well in the Champions League against Dortmund. Yeah, yeah 2-0 um, loss, yeah. So, something like that is going to have an effect. They are struggling at the moment. Defensively, they have they have struggled for with injuries. And Aston so, Villa, you're very you're very organised side. I mean, you, it was quite a lucky goal from that Bong Lahore um, against Liverpool. But the they all the, count. <laughs> they, I know I know they all count. But f- that was in the first ten minutes, was it? And you managed Ab- to oh, hold absolutely, on. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Burnley uh, up against Sunderland. I like Burnley. Um, but that, only, I, beca- I, only because because they have the best, goals, only because they have the best sideboards, like advertising sidings in the league. Uh, I don't know if you saw one for a, a Burnley uh, scaffolding company, and the hang on, and the tagline for the company was the best directions in town. Oh, oh my words! Oh, let's get that ball back. We've got a game to get win. The ball, hurry! Get, <laughs> okay, get it's too late. Get, oh no, he's been a, he's been accosted also, by. What uh, a delight! Look at by just like point out the cross first. <laughs> let's have a look. A bit the of sloppy defending there. First, and then up there. Hang on, that was yeah, that was okay. I see you. I get your point. I get your point. Um, so Burnley, Sunderland, Sunderland are really playing quite well at the moment um, as well as Southampton so I can see that but going it, to the away team but again, but again Sunderland they, they are, they're struggling to get to get points on the board yeah and, and you've got to say against a team like Burnley these are, these are games that Burnley should be winning um, and same really for Sunderland uh, Newcastle versus Hull City is it the last match in charge of Newcastle for, for Pardew you, you, it depends on obviously on the result I mean also, we just don't know what's going on inside the mind of Mike Ashley. Um, no one does. I don't think even no, Mike Ashley does, it wouldn't, really. It wouldn't surprise me if he sacked him. It wouldn't surprise me if he gave him a new contract. Um, yeah. Well, I, he's you, all, you, you his contract's know. still good for six years. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so, um, I, think, I think if they suffer another loss like they did, like that 4-0 loss um, uh, last weekend... Um, oh my word, Lukaku's through again. This might be the death knell for Crystal Palace. Oh my word! Could this be Daniel Frost's first win <laughs> um, at the FIFA Premier League preview and certainly my first defeat. Uh, and the final fixture, uh, West Ham-Liverpool. Liverpool will be looking to get back on track. West Ham showed a lot of fight and spirit um, on Monday. Uh, who do they play against? Is that a two-all draw? Uh, it's a Hull. Oh, Hull, Hull. That's right. Um, so West Ham showing a lot of fight and spirit. That might be a tricky one because obviously they struggled against Aston Villa. They've been playing Champions League football. Balotelli did score though. Um, hello. Oh. oh, my word! Five minutes left of this match. Um, so yeah, an interesting weekend of games. I mean, there's not many big ticket games of the Man City Chelsea but there are games there where teams might slip up um, especially when you look at something like Liverpool West Ham or uh, Aston Villa Arsenal um, but all eyes are on Crystal Palace Everton as Crystal Palace look they to maybe sneak a draw here with some play but um, 
Let's have a quick chat about generally the Premier League this year anyway. Have you enjoyed it? Have you enjoyed it so far? I think so far, yeah. I think some of the, uh, other than maybe Angel de Maria, uh, the big ticket players have yet to really kick into gear. And that's always, that's always growing. I mean, obviously, Falcao's had 20 minutes or so. And Balotelli, well, you never know when he'll show up. Oh, go on. Yes! Oh, yes! No! Yes! <laughs> oh, my word! Oh, my word! What happened here? T- to be fair, two goalkeeping mistakes from Tim Howard in this match, uh, both letting Sahar in. That, that was weird. That was an own goal. <laughs> oh, my word, right. Ultra defensive. Let, <laughs> let's keep this draw. Uh, because nothing would delight me more than to stop you getting your virgin win. Uh, on the FIFA Premier League preview. As you said, the one which we did record but got lost in the technical ether was a one-all draw between Arsenal and Man City. It's over. And there we go. Full time. <sighs> and our prediction for Everton at Goodison Park hosting Crystal Palace uh, in the league. They are positioned um, 11th and 17th respectively. is a draw. Uh, it might not be 3 all. Um Crystal Palace taking a 2-0 lead into the first half. Uh, Naismith and Lukaku levelling it up. Lukaku taking the lead uh, for the first time for Everton, but then Zaha levelling it up at the break. And um, that's pretty much it. Do you think that's what's going to happen? Or do you think it's going to be an Everton win? Quite an easy one. No, I think I think Crystal Palace, I mean, that they've, they've had two draws recently. I think Everton have been conceding goals and they're, 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 they've been struggling to really kind of put together the kind of form they were experiencing last season. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying that goal again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, get a room. Um, I, so I think it. I think a three-three isn't out of the question. I mean, wasn't it three-three Crystal Palace's last game against Newcastle? Or was uh, it week four? Or maybe the week before. Possibly. Um, so yeah, it's not out of the question, but. Um, but we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, as we, as I alluded to in the uh, in the recording, uh, we're going to be playing Aston Villa versus Chelsea next week, um, which could be a crucial top of the table clash. Could well, be. Well, well it, both teams will be up there. Let's say both that. teams will be up there. Yeah, you you might be a bit further down than you are currently, but you will be up there. Um, so yeah, so Aston Villa currently second. Uh, with 10 points, Chelsea first with 12. So that'll be it. Of course, as you will know, being a wonderful fan of this show, that it's not only the, uh, the the games of the Premier League that we're putting up to challenge, it's also our own fifa skills. And as you can see, I am still at the top of the table uh, yes. because I've not lost a match. Uh, but Dan, you've got a couple of points now. So yeah, I've, uh, yeah I've, got, I've got two points. Don't get me wrong, I'm still six points behind, but you know... At least you've got, you've got points on the board, so maybe you'll be able to inspire your Aston Villa side to beat the current um, unbeaten leaders of the FIFA Premier League. So I hope you enjoy, so I hope you've enjoyed the show, as I should say. Uh, join us next uh, week, where we'll bring you Aston Villa versus Chelsea. But for now, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>